Attention Kmart shoppers! Everyone think back to the last time you went to a Kmart. Chances are it wasn't a great experience, or it was well over a decade ago. For many people, it used to be their go-to store. That phrase, Attention Kmart shoppers, that was a very well-known phrase. Attention Kmart shoppers! It was associated with their blue light special, which was a really cool idea for its time. At random moments, the store would light up a police car type light and announce a discount for a special item. People would just hang around the store waiting for the announcement. It kept people in their store longer, it allowed them to push the merchandise they wanted to move, and it did wonders in getting the Kmart name and image in everyone's heads. I would say the idea was genius and a huge success. But this isn't the case anymore. Nobody's hanging around a Kmart waiting for the blue light special announcement. Does Kmart even still run the blue light specials anymore? You don't know, do you? Kmart went from being the number two retail store and everyone's go-to place to what we have today. So what happened? The man who started the Kmart company was named Sebastian S. Kresge. He started the company at the end of the 19th century. In the beginning, there were stores that sold products for 5 and 10 cents, which was cheap even for the 19th century. The stores were named after the founder and called Kresge. It wasn't until 1962 when the actual first Kmart opened. It was in Garden City, Michigan. Interesting thing about this first location, it closed in 2017. Jack Kerstetter is the chair for the Garden City Historical Commission. It doesn't come as a surprise to Jack. He stopped shopping there years ago. It's quality of the merchandise they had, I think it changed over the years, but I haven't bought anything there for quite some time. The Kmart stores expanded rapidly, and by 1977 they were responsible for almost all of Kresge Company sales, which made the company change its official name to the Kmart Corporation. By the late 1980s, the company consisted solely of Kmarts. In 1990, the Kmart logo that we are more familiar with today came to be. Soon after, they opened Super Kmarts and Big Kmarts. It was also around this time period when Kmart made some big acquisitions. In 1990, they bought the Sports Authority and 22% of Office Max. In 1991, they increased their ownership of Office Max to 90%, and in 1992, they bought Borders Bookstores. Though Kmart quickly sold most of its investments by 1995. In 2002, the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. That's the reorganization kind, where the company continues to exist. Well, obviously. In 2004, Kmart Holdings Corporation became Sears Holdings Corporation. It sounds like Sears purchased Kmart, but it was actually the other way around. Kmart acquired Sears, but still called it Sears Holding Corporation. The corporate headquarters moved to Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Before 1990, these were the two largest retailers in the United States. The fact that they were even able to merge like this without government intervention in 2004 speaks to their decline over those 14 years. Another thing that speaks to the decline of Kmart over that time period is the new logo they adopted during the merger. It's this. This is their current logo, one that's been used for the past 13 years. But this logo is still more familiar to you, isn't it? Shouldn't the current logo be the one everyone's more familiar with? That brings us to 2017. The company uses this logo and still operates stores all over the world. So what happened to the company? First, let's take a look at the financial state of the company. I know that looking at financial statements and SEC filings could be boring, but I already looked through them and pulled out some of the more interesting parts. Stick with me, these numbers tell a story. Obviously there were problems even before the merger, enough to file bankruptcy in 2003 and to motivate them into the Sears merger soon after. But believe it or not, the real problems hadn't even started yet. I want to look at them starting in 2006. Kmart and Sears are now one company, so it's hard to separate Kmart from Sears at times. But here is a chart of the number of Kmart stores from 2006 to today. 
and as a result of the number of stores being cut nearly in half over this time period, here's their revenue every year since 2006. It's been lower every year, and today it's well under half of what it was in 2006. The revenue isn't just decreasing because of the reduced number of stores, each store on average is earning less as well. This is trouble, 11 years of contraction. And let's not forget that these numbers of 2006 that seem so high actually aren't. Let's add the single year of 1999 to the chart to compare. Yeah, so from the time of 1999 to 2006, huge decline. The time from 2006 to today, huge decline. So even if you're not a professional analyst, you could probably conclude that Kmart isn't doing great. If you are a financial analyst, you're going to love this next part. We're going to start talking about debt to equity ratios. For the select few of you who aren't analysts, let me explain what this is. It's a very common ratio that sounds much harder than it actually is. All it does is it takes the company's debt, you know like outstanding loans, and divides it by their equity, which is basically the money that would be left over after all debts are paid. If you watch Shark Tank you know exactly what this is. It's used by almost all creditors. They want the company to have low debt and high equity. Therefore, you generally want this number to be low. It varies in different industries, but a number below 2 is generally considered pretty good. So high numbers mean too much debt. If you didn't follow that, just know that high numbers mean the company isn't doing too well. So let's see how Kmart is doing in this department. These are the numbers that encompass the entire Sears Holdings company, so this includes Sears and Kmart's, among a few other things. Up until 2010, the number was fine, but then… see this is the issue. For three years, it went up. So high that I would guess that most creditors wouldn't want to touch this company. Remember, we want numbers around 2 or lower. We're up to 7.4. Then the next three years. So it turned negative. What happened? What happened is the company started having negative equity. There's another phrase that doesn't sound good. Negative equity? Well, it's as bad as it sounds. The company does not have enough money to pay off their debts. How it works is when most companies go out of business, they liquidate all their assets, take all their money from that, and pay off any outstanding debts, and then pocket the rest. If Kmart were to go out of business, they would sell all their assets, then go to pay off all their debts and find out they don't have enough to do it and also there'd be nothing left to pocket. Just for a second, pretend your job is to decide if companies are approved for loans or not. You start reviewing Kmart and learn that they can't even pay off their existing loans. Would you grant them a new loan? This is why Kmart's struggling to get money. Here's their debt to equity ratio compared to that of Target and Walmart. I compare them to Target and Walmart because Kmart themselves mention them as big competitors in their annual report and I think we could all agree these are probably the two largest nationwide competitors. When we compare these numbers, Target and Walmart are actually comparable, but then Kmart is just kind of off the charts. We could take a look at their net income as well, cause that's the bottom line, right? Well, it's bad, as we would expect, and actually negative since 2011, which is connected to their negative equity. I know we hear a lot of things on the news, like Kmart reported negative earnings for the 6th consecutive year, and we all just overlook it and think, oh, bad news for Kmart. Well this is really bad. This is the kind of stuff that almost certainly leads to the death of a company. This stuff makes people surprised that they still exist at all. Here is a statement from a recent SEC filing from Kmart themselves. It says, our historical operating results indicate substantial doubt exists related to the company's ability to continue as a going concern. The company themselves doubts that they can continue to exist based on these kind of numbers. Kmart is soon going to be gone, Sears as well. These stores are hanging on by a thread. I can't put a time period on it, but if you ever want to visit one of these stores again, I suggest you do it soon. So, what happened to Kmart? I'm actually going to answer it this time. It could all be brought back to one thing. People don't want to go to Kmart anymore. Back in the day, if you needed to run out and get an ingredient for a recipe, there's a good chance you would go straight to Kmart. If you wanted to make a major purchase, perhaps a new TV or a new kitchen set, Kmart would be the first place to look. But this isn't the case anymore. Now if we need that ingredient, we'll go out to Walmart or the local grocery store. For bigger purchases, we'll go to places like Home Depot or Best Buy, or we go straight to the internet. 
The internet is killing them all. But people still go to stores all the time. If I want to do some grocery shopping, I'm not going online, I'm going to the store. But I'm not going to a Kmart store. Honestly, I don't even like being in a Kmart. It feels depressing. Walking into Kmart is like walking into a time machine. Seriously, if you want to blast from the past and want to feel like you're shopping in 1994, go to a Kmart. They've not updated the look or feels of their stores. As I showed you, they don't have any money to do it either. But maybe back when it was the 90s, they should have put some more focus into updating their stores and investing in themselves rather than purchasing other companies. They lost touch with the customer. They stopped caring about them. The registers they use can't be seen anywhere else. Forget touchscreens, they still use monitors with an 8 inch screen that only displays green text. As you can imagine, these registers aren't quite as fast and leave customers waiting in line more than twice as long as any other store. This brings me to another issue, the talent working the register. No offense if you work at Kmart, but you should quickly start looking for employment elsewhere. A question for anyone out there who works at Walmart or Target or somewhere like this. Would you quit your job if given a job offer to work at a Kmart? Well, I certainly hope not. I'd hate to say it, but this leaves Kmart with people that the other stores have refused. And this isn't just the cashiers and workers in the stores. This goes all the way up to corporate. Do you think any executives from those same stores want to leave their positions to work at Kmart? They would have to pay really well. And as we saw, they can't afford to pay really well. Now this issue is the result of a spiral. It didn't start the problem, but it just adds to it. What does Kmart have to offer? I'd like to know. What do they have to offer? Give me a reason I would go there over their competitors. The prices aren't any better than most stores. The environment is worse. The employees are generally worse to deal with. It takes longer. They have some exclusive products like the Martha Stewart collection, but Martha Stewart needs to have some pretty phenomenal products for me to go to Kmart to get them. So what happened to Kmart? The customer failed to come first, and the customer left. In 1990, Walmart passed Kmart to be the second largest retailer, and over the last 17 years have left them in the dust. I do remember going to Kmart when I was younger. I'm not going to lie and say it was a magical experience in the highlight of my week. I remember it as just being another store. There wasn't much that stood out about it, but it was the place to go when you needed to buy stuff. Some people remember the stores being fantastic. The blue light specials were great. And when they said attention Kmart shoppers, it was exciting. But even many of these people have given up on the store. They've lost their loyalist of customers. The Kmart that they remember doesn't exist anymore and probably won't even exist in this capacity for much longer. Here's a statement I pulled from Kmart's 2006 annual report. It says, our success depends on our ability to differentiate ourselves from our competitors with respect to shopping convenience, a quality assortment of available merchandise, and superior customer service. In the end, I'm not so sure they followed this.